Twitter today in Uganda has become basically the platform in which you can communicate, you can share, you can give your opinion. Twitter has given Ugandan people the power. We have videos going viral, we have um, tweets going viral, we have photos going viral. And one of the best examples I can give you is at the beginning of this year, 2021, we had what we call the general elections, 2021 general elections. But then in the midst of all that, of videos begin to leak on Twitter and they are showing um, agents involved in the elections actually stuffing ballot boxes with already ticked ballot sheets into the boxes and these ticked ballot sheets show that Yoweri Kaguta Museveni was already ticked positive so this caused a lot of controversy on Twitter on social media in the public people are saying okay we got these results how do we even trust them one of the greatest impacts I believe it had was and I have seen is it made the public lose trust in the government people did not trust the government there were other videos there were other photos um for example on uh, the 8th of july um 2020 ntv which is yeah ntv news its online uh page on twitter posted a, a a story that was still developing by then and they were talking about how a student who is who was known he's 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 um he passed on he's called um emmanuel tegu so he was a veterinary student at makere university which is quite a renowned university and yes he was caught within this was a period in which we were given the lockdown um rules of you know do not move within us or beyond a specific hour but tegu was found moving within the university premises of makere at night so next thing that came out was that tegu was assaulted and tegu eventually passed on but the question was who assaulted tegu now this caused a lot of controversy because by the time this story came out on twitter and went viral it showed the police of uganda the ugandan police filling up the university premises going to saint augustine it's a church saint augustine chapel which is within the university which was the only point of the university that had a cctv camera that caught some of what actually some of the events that actually occurred in regards to tegu's death but they took the footage and they said no this footage will not be released as it is we need our pro to first look through it i mean and and, and the next thing is that they took it and then by the time um they released it they said that okay we, we it, it became a, a very controversial issue first they said we can't release it because it has a lot of really brutal scenes and it just kept going in circles but what the chapel wanted to do was release the footage to the media as it was and then thirdly, we also saw one of the stories that really made it big on Twitter um, was when, end of last year rather, um, this, uh, like I told you, the greatest opposer, op opponent to our current president, that's Eureka Guta Museveni, was arrested. And once he was arrested, this caused a lot of unsettled, you know, the country went in chaos, specifically Kampala and some other parts of Uganda went, you know, it was a big deal. People started rioting on the streets. People started complaining. People are saying, release Robert Chagulanyi. Free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine. Free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine. Free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine. Musa Lop on fire, free Bobby Wine, free Bobby Wine. So, um, in the middle of those riots, hundreds of people died. Uh, there was a lot of footage caught on videos and photos of people being hurt, and also the police hurting the people. Free Uganda! I'm Ugandan, please! Dennis Free Jair, my rights! I'm being arrested I'm here by Ugandan. the police. I'm Ugandan! Free my freedom! When we get to Facebook, Facebook caters for all, you know, walks of life. You know, a lot of things have come under the presidential elections, honestly speaking. There was actually a lot of abductions that took place. People reported of how their family relatives were just caught, you know, picked up from the street um, by, you know, vans and, you know, which they now call um, drones. The allegation was that these people who are abducting, abducting these um, Ugandans are under the Ugandan military force and the people that are being abducted are strictly supporters of the opposition, strictly supporters of NOOP, which is the national unity platform, strictly supporters of Robert 
Chagulani. So this too went viral um, when we saw the story on, on, on one of the TV television platforms that is um, NTV. And then we also saw, um, still within, okay, last year we saw our Speaker of Parliament. Her name is Rebecca Kadaga. Rebecca Kadaga caused a lot of um, chaos on social media, specifically Facebook, when she and some other parliamentary members, members of parliament rather, um, decided to allocate themselves 10 billion shillings in regards or in the name of trying to help, you know, carry out duties and uh, to, to fight COVID-19. Before getting to this figure of 10 billion, they had cut off 5 billion from the health budget. And it was done, this allocation was done quietly. So this went viral. Oh goodness, Facebook was buzzing, social media platforms were buzzing. We saw people talking about how these parliamentar parliamentarians may actually be stealing money from us all this time and we are unaware. And, you know, probably we're getting caught, you know, they, we only know now because, you know, they have got caught. And then we also saw another story that was, um, still on Facebook and made an immense impact. And this is when, uh, you know, in regards to, to the abductions, when um, one of the ministers came out and said that, no, we, we, we're not abducting anyone. We're not behind these abductions. These are people who are trying to make the government look bad. And, 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 and you, know, you know, the public had already got to a place where they are so convinced because they are seeing military uniforms, they have been getting hurt by the military personnel. And then today, they are being told it's not us. Someone is stealing our uniform and putting it on. I mean, that's, that's the assumption. So that kind of statement brought out by the minister, Mr. Sam Kutesa, Honorable sorry, Sam Kutesa, also caused a lot of chaos um, on social media, um, specifically Facebook. But it hasn't stopped on Facebook, it hasn't stopped on Twitter. We have also seen um, cartoons being drawn by columnists and cartoonists of newspapers. And they have, of course, it's, you know, we're digital. So these drawings that have been done in newspapers are being taken um, to the social media platforms like Twitter specifically. And one of the most um, big and viral stories or cartoon story that, that did trend on Twitter under the Daily Monitor on the 8th of um, the 8th of the 9th month, that's September 2020. Uh, this was a story about the State Minister for Labor and International Relations. He's called Rukutana Mwesigwa. Now, he was standing for elections within his region and in the middle of his traveling, he, he came across some of the supporters of his opposer. He came across one of the, some of the supporters of his the opposer who were in a car so they they a scuffle breaks out they start engaging they start you know changing exchanging crowds pick up they start exchanging things and you know he pulls out a gun and he starts shooting he starts shooting around him he starts shooting at the crowd and you, this was a big deal so this also actually became a court case um he was he was charged with attempted murder, assault, malicious damage, and threatening violence. And a cartoon was drawn which showed the president um, seated carrying Ruktana, who is wearing a diaper, on his lap. And he's, he's hitting him with something, you know, sort of like a toy and telling him, next time, you know, don't do it again. I mean, not don't, not don't do it again. Next time, be careful. And then we also got to see another cartoon that was um, put up by... A gentleman called um, his name is Jim Spire Sentongo and it was showing Eli Tumwine right Eli Tumwine who is the security sorry minister of Uganda now Eli Tumwine is told that okay yes certain murders have taken place people have been killed by the military forces and in this cartoon instead of seeing Eli Tumwine addressing the issue and saying okay why are these people being killed how could they we are going to catch the killers Eli Tumwine the minister of security in Uganda is seen saying we don't know who the killers we don't know the killers yes but we shall surely catch those who provoked them so this 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 cartoon had so much magnitude on the public I mean this is what people felt. He, he publicly said that he was not concerned about who were the killers. He was con concerned about the people who seem to be disturbing the peace. The, 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 the assumption is they are triggering this violence. They are causing these people to kill them because they must be disturbing them. And we must catch these people 
who are disturbing our 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 security officers as well as some other cartoons such as uh there was a cartoon that the same artist came up with he's called jim spice and tonga where he shows a budget being set for tear gas and then a, a budget for oxygen and it's you know the plate a plate next to it also says oxygen and it's, the budget for oxygen and the money is very little so we're we're, we're taking it as you know the government is more concerned about pouring tear gas on us, killing us, than keeping us alive. And then lastly, we also have had a couple of videos go viral. There was one that was really, really, really a big, big deal. Um, it was posted by a gentleman called Kelvin Mawun Mawunya um, Ashon. Now, Kelvin posted this on the 12th of November 2020, and in this video, we see um, Ugandans, local. The video was taken from a balcony by an unknown person. So it's, it shows the locals standing on the roadside, and um, they're excited. They're, they're first looking at something, and it, it seems to be a convoy of cars coming. You know, government or you know someone important obviously coming by. So they are first watched. They are first shown looking, and then after some time, it shows some of these um, locals running to the the corridors of um, the neighborhood, running back from the roadside, while the others remain standing at the roads. So as this car reach, this convoy reaches, and the few that remain standing at the roadside are see them. They start, you know. Getting excited, they start cheering on, and all of a sudden, gunshots just start running, and you see some of these, or one of these uh, locals just fall to the ground, and she's shot. And this person is posting and saying, okay, what is happening? Why? How do you just kill someone like that? So that went viral um, on Twitter. Once again, police brutality. Once again, we're removing a dictator. Those are the hashtags that we started seeing on Twitter most of the time. People were so alarmed. People were so troubled with what they were seeing in these kinds of videos. And then finally, one of the biggest videos that hit in 2021 at the beginning of the year was when the um, biggest opponent to the president, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, that is Robert Chagulani, was arrested. When the video of him being arrested went viral, there was a lot of, you know, release Bobby Wine, release Bobby Wine, let Bobby Wine, we are removing a dictator, release Bobby Wine, which actually, like I said later, led to what we saw were riots. But before that, people went on social media, they were advocating for this gentleman. They were saying, this is a man who's bringing us change. You have to release him. You're a dictator. You have to release him. Why are you arresting him? And he had been arrested on so many occasions. This wasn't the first time. So yes, it got people talking. It got people pushed. It, it is the reason the riots, you know, it contributed rather to the riots actually happening because not only were people talking on a physical level, but they were also talking about it on social media and it was going viral specifically on Twitter, but also on Facebook and, you know, some other social media platforms like WhatsApp. I saw it a lot on um, WhatsApp groups for spe specifically those who were very strong um, supporters of the Nuke Party and specifically um, Robert Chagulani. So that too um, really... Uh, you know, it, it, it really got the it, it moved from that to, to, to riots and then to I, I believe we got some I think it speaks it speaks about the civilians, you know, going out of their way, you know, getting out on social media and causing, you know, this campaign and then I I, I believe it speaks a lot in, in regards to the situation um in the country.